So hello everyone and welcome to TechScan's very first Tech Talk series, Candid Conversations with Key Dental Influencers. Like many of you, we at TechScan are used to traveling around the world to many different dental education events. We like meeting new people, connecting with colleagues that share the same passion as we do, which is really about improving dentistry. No matter how many webinars we watch, we still aren't getting that same feeling of connection we once had at our in-person events. We are very, very lucky as a company to work with some of the best dentists and top influencers and educators around the world. So in an attempt to connect all of us together during these crazy times, we thought what better way than to interview these leaders and learn and connect with them. So to start us off today, we're talking with Dr. Henriette Lerner and Dr. Miguel Stanley. Both of these dentists do not need to be introduced as I'm sure you already know who they are by now. Henriette is a world-class educator, surgeon, dentist, author, researcher, and overall amazing person and friend. Miguel is revolutioning, revolutionizing how dentists are practicing dentistry and viewing themselves through worldwide initiatives like Slow Dentistry and No Half Smiles. Mainly, he's just a really good person and an excellent dentist. They're both on the forefront of what's happening today in digital dentistry and can share their insights into what is new and happening around the, uh, around the world. So before we get in, I just want to mention a few things about Zoom webinar. If you experience any problems with your audio, I'd recommend that you disable your computer audio and reconnect via your telephone line. This is being recorded and it will be available shortly after the interview if you have any problems. We'll take questions at the end of the interview. Please submit those questions in the Q&A panel in Zoom webinar. I'm guessing most of you are already very, very aware of how Zoom works by now. So welcome to the first Tech Talk series. Henriette and Miguel, thank you so much for being here. Um, how are you both doing? Tell us a little bit about what's happening in, happen uh, in Germany and in Portugal. How are things going? Fill us in a little bit. Thank you, Jen. It's a huge opportunity and great opportunity to see you online and to speak to the world about our, our mentality, our vision, and our partnership, of course, in the digital world with you. Um, in Germany, as I told you before, a couple of minutes ago, we are working in another rhythm, in a slow dentistry mode <laughs> uh, and high quality and high digital um, uh, quality of, uh, of work. Um, this opportunity, this crisis which we all encounter give us opportunities to find new solutions, new modes of working and give a better quality to the people uh, also by respecting all this hygiene uh, measurements and uh, hygiene tools which we have so i see also an opportunity in um, in the digital revolution which makes our profession also a new profession uh, mike uh, miguel michael <laughs> miguel what are, what are you saying about um well I, I would have to say that obviously, you know, COVID, uh, when it hit in March, um, I think everybody was profoundly scared. You know, when you use the word pandemic, you instantly think millions of deaths and all of that, and um, uh, tens of millions of deaths. You know, if you look back in history from the, the previous pandemics, the Spanish flu, all of that. So I think instantly dentists went into lockdown. Um, I personally did over 43 webinars between March and May, and I interfaced with a lot of colleagues from around the world. And, um, you know, I think that it was an incredible um, time for us to understand that we did have to slow down a little bit because a lot of practices were focusing on trying to fit in as many patients as possible in their schedule. Um, Obviously, when we talk about digital dentistry, we always use the word speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. So it could lead to the wrong idea that we want everything to be fast. I think that technology is about speeding up accuracy, speeding up certain processes mm -hmm. to give us more time with our patients. And of course, one of the things is, you know, making sure that patients, not just the patients, but your staff, your receptionist, your cleaning lady, that everybody on your team feels safe because all it takes is one of those people to get sick that your business shuts down. So i um, very happy to see colleagues around the world uh, take time to to implement proper hygiene protocols in some countries like I'm sure you know Germany and Northern Europe 
um, the regulations were a little bit more strict, let's put it that way. But the world is big and we have to think of the entirety of Latin America, Brazil, where there's over 270,000 dentists. Uh, countries like Japan, which had a lot of strict rules as well, but the UK, where the average time for an appointment was 15 minutes on the NHS. You know, how are you going to implement safety rules with that? So uh, I think that the digital dentistry still has a huge um, job ahead of them, not so much about understanding what digital can do, but also uh, understanding why to make that investment, but also how to implement that into an already packed workflow because a lot of dentists, unfortunately, are still running against the clock from morning till evening. That creates stress. It creates mental illness. There's a lot of stress in dentistry. So I think that uh, interviews like this, hopefully uh, 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 associated with this very unfortunate world pandemic that we're going through, uh, we need to really, everybody needs to slow down. And as Henriet said, reappraise, reevaluate, recalibrate. Uh, our businesses in order to uh, achieve long-term success. Absolutely. Um, I think everybody's going through that, that same process and, you know, hoping for the best as, as things come in the next, you know, six months or so. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the Digital Dentistry Society that you're both um, involved with and board members of this organization. So Henriette, could you tell us a little bit about the Digital Dentistry Society's mission and goals? Um, Digital Dentistry Society, it is today the reference for digital science and education. Uh, its mission is to reach out and find the most advanced technologies validate them through studies and set parameters through consensus, implement those parameters in a current workflow in a daily office for clinicians and spread all these parameters through uh, online and physical education. Um, all this process, uh, which is really um, wide, it's implemented and respected in all the 40 countries where we are represented. The ambassadors and the certified speakers have uh, very strict rules of selection. Um, and we see all of us, the board members, the ambassadors, and all the leaders of the society, the necessity in this revolutionary time where, where dentistry becomes a new profession to set new parameters, new workflows, new um, uh, ways of, of, of uh, processing our, our dentistry in the daily office to, um, to gather that promise which the digital world gives us in terms of more predictability, uh, less invasivity, um, uh, and so on. So that is our mission, and uh, I, we are very happy to partner with um, industrial partners which are sharing with us this philosophy and working on the same targets in, in research and in education. Yeah, we as, a, we as a company have really valued that, that relationship as well. It's, it's been an excellent organization to be a part of. Um, so Jen, I, I, just, I just have to say that under Dr. Henriette Lerner's presidency, uh, she was for the past two years uh, the president of the society, uh, the exponential growth that the society benefited under her guidance and leadership was absolutely impressive. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, associations around the world, women in dentistry, women this, and it's just like, first of all, I never understood the difference, but if anybody's ever had the opportunity of working with Dr. Henriette, I mean, she's probably one of the hardest, most focused working uh, people in the game and we were all very very lucky to have her just inject her amazing vision energy uh, ethics and uh, you know under her guidance we've opened embassies in South Africa in the UK uh, in just it's just blew up so and uh, the results were seen in the last uh, just a few days ago in uh, what was I think the first meeting post-COVID by any organization which was held under the new, with the new president, Carlo Mangano, one of the founding members uh, in the north of Italy. Dr. Coachman, Christian Coachman flew out. 
and a bunch of, uh, you know, Henriot was there. It's just, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. But um, the meeting was, again, digital. So I had a lot of doctors online. It went, it was perfectly, perfectly done. And it was just, the feedback was incredible, really solidifying our role as the number one organization in the world for digital dentistry education. Yeah, and I think the... Absolutely. From from an attendee perspective to that meeting and leading up to it and having um, working with a, a dentist that was going to be doing um, a lecture there, doc, Dr. Kirstein, it from my perspective, it was one of the it is the it was the most well organized event right. that I, I mean, and, and the way my experience being online during that meeting was incredible incredible compared to some of the other events that I've seen. That was the, the, the Roberto Mangano, who's uh, him and his team with Fifth Ingenium. I mean, these guys, they work with Microsoft directly. I mean, yeah, they're geniuses. It was... I mean, there was direct translation. So people that, you know, for deaf people, for people that could, it's just, it was amazing. It was out of this world. And just to be said, you know, there's uh, like some other organizations trying to jump in and take, uh, in, come into this game. And you know, I'm very well known for being positive and be part of a bigger game, but th th they can't catch up with us. They can try, they can try and go after, you know, but uh, yeah. this is, so for any dentist, you know, thinking about what organization to sign up to, just look at the names on the portfolio, look at the companies that have invested, look at the track record, look at the history, and it's a no brainer. There's only yeah. room for one and we're there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well. Um, so you both- to what, Yeah, just to say, to what, to what you said, I mean, the profession has no gender, one. Secondarily, <laughs> the teamwork makes the dream work. So <laughs> we are very proud of our vice president, which is the, uh, the big engine behind it, and it was in the hybrid consensus, um, the motor on the screen, right? And uh, yeah, it was um, really the, the most uh, professional hybrid conference this year, and that's actually the single one. We'll see what's coming, right? So, Jeff. So you both embraced digital for a long time now, and you have all different types of technologies in your practice. Um, Miguel, you wrote an article recently uh, that discusses how technology can help general dentists be better more accurate clinicians. So Miguel, what, what would you say to dentists that are struggling to make that commitment to moving to digital or having a hard time implementing technology? Because I know that we, we hear that. Well, it's a great question. My article specifically was on low risk dentistry and mm -hmm. high risk dentistry. So mm -hmm. it's, I was thinking a lot about this and you know, as a dentist, you're given the keys to the car of a patient's mouth. And you know, it's, it's not just a car. With the same license, I, I think I say you can ride a bicycle, a motorbike, a car, a supercar, a plane, a super plane, and depending on what you want to do. And depending on your ethical levels, depending on your teamwork, you know, you get to either change that person's life for better or for worse. And if you are financially motivated and you don't really have the right education, you might be making some mistakes. So I'm not going to speak to the dentist. I'm going to speak to the public here very soon the public will know the difference. So if you do not have the, inf the capacity, the tools to acquire data such as CBCT, iOS, which are entry level tools into the digital platform, which will allow you to share those files with labs, other doctors, you know, because nowadays, send me my x-rays, you know, if a patient changes doctor, they'll say, send me my x-rays, which is now they're gonna say, send me my ExoCAD files. I wanna see how much tooth you prepped off my, off my teeth. You said you were gonna do minimal invasive dentistry, send me my ExoCAD files. Let's just think about that for a second. If your x-rays belong to the patient, trust me, the ExoCAD files also belong to the patient. Now you might not be a digital dentistry, but your lab certainly is. So it's no longer a question of how to get away from it or how to get into it. You already in it. You're already in it. So now it's a question of mastering it and understanding it. So, you know, a lot of dentists are like, oh, I don't know where to start. You started the second you worked, sent a crown to your lab. Your lab, I mean, if you, unless you're in a part of the world where your lab is still, you know, in the dark ages, every single lab is doing digital dentistry. They know how your prep is. And if you are being sued by a doctor for malpractice or whatever, it's going to be 
very, very short period of time. And I'm going to be pushing for that. Trust me, I'm going to be pushing for that to the public. You know, it, the, you're here to help to serve the public, not to serve your own interests. And that's the benefit of digital dentistry. It's an invisible police force. So it's not a question of how to do it. It's a question of how to work with it. And at the end of the day, the guiding force of digital dentistry is ethics. It's biology. Be a biologist, be a minimal invasive dentist, be an ethical dentist, follow the science. So if you want to master digital dentistry, you have to master dentistry. It doesn't make you a better dentist. It just gives you better tools. It does help speed things up, streamline things. But if you're going to be making mistakes, that's just going to allow more people to see it. So perhaps the question is not how do I get into digital dentistry? The question is, how do I become a better dentist? So speaking of the, um, the research aspect of things, you said follow the science. So the, the digital dentistry meeting that took place that was in Italy this past week, um, Henriette, what were some of the key findings or takeaways that, that came from that meeting? Uh, yes, Miguel, I think that I agree with you. Uh, there, the people are looking to get into digital dentistry, but the dilemma is how to choose from all these technologies, which are there, uh, the right ones, and also which are the parameters which are of selection concerning the accuracy, trueness, precision, uh, and also reproductibility, predictability, and so on. And exactly this is the mission of the digital society, and this is why we have a consensus where, where we had also last week, and it's every two years, to um, to see, prelim we saw last week, preliminary results uh, concerning the accuracy of Combium CT and a lot of AI application in the Combium CT, which are uh, studies in Belgium, which are tremendous. And it will be surprising what we will publish also in the DDS book in the next year. Uh, accuracy, uh, trueness and precision of all the iOS, uh, intraoral scanners of the printers the marginal fit of the crowns, which uh, is 50 microns, not more. This is a preliminary result, but all the results will be published in a, in a couple of weeks in, an, in a special issue. And also all the lectures you will be able to, be, to see every week, one topic, one lecture on our online educational uh, platform for all of, uh, all of the members and free members. Then we have, of course, parameters and uh, the application of those parameters in a digital of, of the digital occlusion and we know you, you addressed that in the first sentence or the first few sentences the necessity of having a higher precision and accuracy in occlusion in implant dentistry since implants are have a completely different behavior than the teeth we have different behavior and different occlusion in a full arch rehabilitation on implants or in single implants and so on couple of or pl plenty of complications which in the preliminary results we saw that are coming from uh, an poorly let's say or not so precise and not so accurate uh, adapted ad and adjusted occlusion and uh, yeah uh, please uh, keep online and keep uh, keep connected with those this results which will be published uh, then um, also state of the art of dynamic navigation, uh, also the application of the digital workflow in, uh, in maxillofacial surgery. So it was a an, an potpourri of, of preliminary results, uh, which we will filter and synthesize and offer to the world the parameters of application of all these things. So that was actually the essence of the thing. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for, for yeah. answering that. And it, I, I would, just to compound what Henry had said, I, mm -hmm. I think Ro Robert Kirstein's lecture was uh, very, very, very interesting, very insightful. And uh, I know we'll get into it in a bit, but uh, I personally learned a lot. And that's the cool thing about this, you know, it's like, no matter how much you think you know about any topic, um, I think one of the most important foundations of excellence in our profession is the humility to learn. And... Uh, finding some time in your busy schedule to sit down and just be humble enough to open your mind to listen to somebody that you might think is not at your level, you know, or, oh, I don't care about this or I don't care about that. But um, unlike, unlike other industries, everybody's pushing towards the same point, which is to have quality work and less failure. So 
the, the, the objective of everybody's education tutorials or online is the same thing, is to benefit uh, our profession. So that's the cool thing about these platforms and the, 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 this consensus and these meetings. And definitely people should sign up to the, to the Digital Dentistry Society to learn more because there's always just some little thing that all of a sudden can change your life and improve it drastically. Well, and it's, it's real data, I think, too. It's, it's real science that's happening that's not driven at, at a company level, too. I think that it's, you're comparing all sorts of different things. You know, I think that from the tech scan perspective, it would be great to compare it against any other types of, you know, digital occlusion that may come out in the next few years. I mean, I think that it's, it's really important that it's based in research. And for us as a company, we have been, we've been pushing research for a really long time. Um, and I think that that's what my key, one of my key takeaways was, you know, this is really valuable information for the dentist because it's not just company supported information that's coming out. My scanner is more accurate than yours. This digital occlusion device is better than this. It's, it's based in, in hard science data research, I think is really important. Yeah, definitely. So I'm gonna switch gears just a little bit. Um, during COVID, we have seen dentistry just make this huge shift from in-person learning to, to virtual webinars and events. And the, the consensus meeting that was this past weekend, as we mentioned, did a amazing job of having people in person but also people that were attending online and really had an excellent experience for the attendees. Um, for, to both of you, you know, as teachers and lecturers, what tips can you provide to dentists out there that are trying to learn new techniques? Usually they're traveling around, they're, they're able to focus in, um, at, a, at an education event, but how, what are some tips that you can talk to them about to learn new techniques new techniques virtually versus at an in-person um, event? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, crises are chances and give opportunities. And we have to use this chance that we work maybe a little bit less on the patient and the opportunity that we can uh, learn online so much. Of course, there is a big virtual world which is opening there in terms of, of online information and professional information. Of course, you have to select them, but they are serious societies which are offering selected and structured information which you can gather from the chair of your office or from the chair of your home already and take opportunity of, of this and learn. Use the time to learn and to prepare the time which is coming uh, by gathering the right, right technologies which offers you the right parameters and, and the tools that you, that you need. And I give you a good news, and this was, uh, were, we, we had that in the, um, presented in the consensus conference. There are um, online, uh, let's say, virtual educational tools, visual virtual educational tools, like the Holodentist. So it's an app where doctor with patient, doctor with doctor, doctor with technician can communicate on the hand of the virtual um, visual pictures. So this is a couple of weeks to come and be aware of that and learn online visually and auditively. So um, take advantage of that. This would be my message. That's great. I, I would say that um, a, a lot of people, one of the big reasons, one of the major stresses in learning is that they fail to turn around and look at their business. And, um, you know, when trying to analyze, wanting to learn something new, you have to understand how that new software will affect your hardware, you know, your clinic. So I think that a lot of uh, dentists um, are trying, you know, everybody wants to be financially successful or socially successful. They want to be respected by their peers. And a lot of dentists are trying to acquire badges of success, you know, like, uh, like generals, you know, from the cold war, you know, having all of these, but, you know, and look at me, I'm, I have to be better than the other person. Look at all my medals, you know, and at the end of the day, uh, you take, you take that jacket off when you go and face your patient, you know, we're all the same when we sit down in front of a patient from the top dentist in the world to a dentist in the remote third world country. It's that really difficult, challenging interface between, you know, how, healing somebody. So I think that, people probably want to take a look at their business 
their understanding of the actual the, 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 their practice. Are you happy with the way that you're working? Do you feel complete? Do you feel uh, satisfied? Are you stressed every day? Are you managing to complete your tasks? Are you managing to process information, do correct diagnostics? Are you, do you have spare time in your brain to acquire new information? So much like wanting to buy a new sofa for your house, if your house is messy, the first thing you do is you have to clean up your house before you change your furniture, right? So I think that um, people need to probably do some house cleaning before going into acquiring new information. You have to let go of some things in order to acquire new things. We're human beings and that's how our brain works. Yeah. Excellent. Open the wind of changes. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Um, so we at TechScan, we partnered with the Digital Dentistry Society, as we mentioned, because of dentists like you both. Um, you guys are so dedicated to teaching and, and constantly improving your own clinical skills and knowledge. Um, you've both been using T-Scan for a while now and are part of this really important study on implant complications that's going on through the Digital Dentistry Society. I know DDS provides dentists with many different learning experiences, and so Henriette, you mentioned um, both online and in-person options. What's the best way for non-DDS members to join if they're interested? And um, what are some of those online options for people? Uh, we offer on, uh, on, uh, on our online platform and uh, basic information for all free members. So anything what you need to do is to register. So actually it's an invitation to the entire professional world to uh, be our guest and see some basic education from uh, all our meetings, all our courses or lectures from all our past meetings are there as a basic information and also the basic information of, uh, of our partners provided by our partners. What I uh, would also emphasize on is, of course, selected and structured education we are on or is an online platform for active members, additional information. Now, uh, what I would like to emphasize on is also mm, the possibility to read ebooks like the um, Digital Occlusion by Robert Kirstein, which was recently uploaded um, on, on our e learning platform, and the DDS book is coming uh, as an um, e learning book. Uh, will be published by Quintessence and all these, uh, all these things are, will be open for, for everybody. So it's really here an open invitation for everybody. Appreciate that. I think that the, um, for people that are, that are listening, um, you can always contact us at TechScan and we can make sure that you're um, in touch with the right people as well if you want to become a member. Um, I want to just thank you both so much for your insight. I think- I would just like, if I can, one sure. thing. I, I, it was my take home message from Robert Kirstein's uh, lecture. And for those of you that don't know the T-Scan, that don't, you know, um, this, this, let's face it, you guys are T-Scan, you have the only device on the planet that does what it does. Now, why am I happy to talk about this? If you had competition, there might be an ethical discussion here about, so we get no payment from T-Scan to do this, all right, uh, whatsoever. We're not paid to say good things about T-Scan. Let's just put that out there. And moreover, uh, you, own, you have the only technology in the world capable of not just measuring pressure, but the first contact point and the amount of pressure. Whereas paper, occlusion paper, only measures where it touches. It doesn't measure the amount of force it doesn't measure, it measure the complete area and it doesn't me measure which contact point touches first. And if you're doing restorative dentistry in composite or in ceramics or in zirconia, you have to know what contact point happens first. So the combination of the T-scan and then the paper, that combination is absolutely, it's just, there's nothing like it. And you, know, you can understand how that can save you money by making sure that you don't have fractures and stress down the line, not just your ceramics that can break, not just the problems in your patient's uh, TMJ and all of that, uh, but also it's just something very easy, very quick, and the training is very, very fast. It's very intuitive. Yes, you have to get past the financial investment uh, and maybe a little bit of training, 
But if you are doing restorative dentistry, it's an absolute no brainer. So I really want to, if you speak to Robert, give him my best. It was a genius presentation and absolutely critical to any dentist doing partial, uh, restore, you know, partial mouth or full mouth restorative dentistry. Really impressive. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, also, as part of this, this Tech Talk um, series, you know, we're, we're interviewing key influencers in dentistry, but as people enroll, they also get access to four um, really well done workshops that, that Robert himself put together. Um, and it's all about, you know, what is T-Scan? You know, that's why really the interviews aren't focusing as much on that, but um, really trying to get your guys' perspective on things in dentistry. Um, but certainly the people that are enrolled to learn more about our technology, um, those four workshops are the place to go. And um, yeah, those, those are available for when people enrolled to the series, they, they get those included for free. So um, yeah, we really appreciate you saying that. Um, let me just take a couple questions here from the audience. So one is, what are the top digital technologies you think are important for all dentists? You've already, yeah. you've already said T-Scan, so you can, you can <laughs> add T-Scan in if you want. Well, the first entry level is a smartphone, so you can communicate with your lab or other team members uh, by videoing uh, aspects of the patient's smile, of uh, models, of, of screens, of x-rays. So digital dentistry is all about communication and improving the quality of that communication. So uh, for those of you that think you're not a digital dentist, if you're communicating with your lab through uh, you know, uh, digital platforms, then you're a digital dentist. Second, an iOS scanner, without a doubt. Uh, that, or if you don't have an iOS scanner, then a tabletop scanner that allows you to digitalize uh, impressions. And of course, the, I would say the, the, what really brings you in is a CBCT. And uh, those, that, those things really, really um, change not just your life, but it changes the vision of how much you can do uh, for your patients. Technologies are making your life easier and it's making uh, the life easier and easier because the home beam CT technology, for example, or many, many technologies are implementing all the other data in one. So uh, you cannot say, okay, I need an intraoral scanner. Now you have the possibility to have a face scanner and home beam CT, implement the intraoral scanner in the same technology um, and so on. So it's becoming more and more exciting and challenging. And it's like a virus. When you have an apple, you don't go back to Windows, right? <laughs> so this is, um, this is what is happening. It's an avalanche of information. And it's actually the dentists we will practice. We practice now and we will practice tomorrow. That is why we have to decrease or to minimize the learning curve and go for it. You know, and just to compound what Henry had said, you know, for somebody that's got no experience in digital dentistry and we know just looking at the numbers in us uh, it's quite a lot there's a lot of dentists still you know wanting to make the transition and that's why these for, these platforms are so important and that's why the work of the digital dentistry society which isn't a european organization it's a global organization so also very focused on us dentistry um it, why these things are so important so much like a smartphone, you don't really need training. You buy one and it's very, very intuitive. Digital, the people that design the softwares and the technologies design this for, you know, people without, you know, it's really, really simple. So I'll tell you, how, when, I, when I get a, a, an intraoral scanner in the clinic, I'm not the guy unboxing it and I'm not the guy testing it first. Usually it's a junior dentist that's never seen it before. And I say, you know, plug it in the wall and, and set it up for me and call me when you've scanned an arch. And 20 minutes later, they'll call me and it's done. It's very streamlined, you know? So if you are thinking of buying technology, make sure that it's open source. Try and stay, I, I, a lot of companies aren't gonna like this, but uh, when you buy a closed system, it, everything's closed and you wanna like upgrade with this, it makes it kind of difficult. Most companies now are open, the STL files are open. Because if you want to work, if you imagine you buy a scanner, but your lab doesn't receive the scans from that scanner. So before you buy any information, go find out in your network if everybody says, is this, not just the company, 
you know, not just because it's cool, buy a technology that your network can work with, you know, so your whoever's making your aligners, who's ever making your, you know, your surgical guides, who's ever speak to your, your, your universe before you buy it. Okay. And I think that's something that's very important as well. And that's why we have these to help people. Yeah, this is actually what digital dentistry teaches in the education, also the integration of this validated technologies in a coherent workflow, because this is the second dilemma, except the accuracy. And what I, uh, concerning the, the, the easiness and the, um, of, of, the, of the technologies, artificial intelligence, which is something that we, digital society has worked very much on, is everywhere in those technologies. And this is what, uh, what is the engine by making all the softwares easier and, and uh, yeah, to use by the button. And it's a lot to come, you will see. Excellent. So the next question here, this is, uh, this is an interesting one. So I guess based on the latest studies, um, is the question is directly, is digital more accurate than analog? And, you know, when I read the question, I think, I guess it depends on the exact technology, right? For T-Scan, um, mm -hmm. you're comparing it to using articulating paper alone, right? So the combination of using both T-Scan and articulating paper together um, is obviously going to be much more accurate than just using articulating paper alone. But, but when we're talking about intraoral scanners and other technologies, what are your guys' thoughts? Well, if I, if I may, uh, first of all, your answer was perfect, Jen. It's not and or. Yeah. It's, you ha you know, so you don't stop using articulation paper. What it does is help you, it helps you decipher the articulation paper. Right. It helps you wait, not just to randomly grind down, it helps you, oh, that point. So take a look at the technology. Regarding is an intraoral scanner better than a impression? Well, if you're taking an impression with a bad technique, if you're taking an impression with a bad material that suffers from thermal uh, 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 um, um, change or water change, you know, so ex usually top level polyethers, which are probably for implant dentistry, the best are very expensive, very expensive. I mean, if you're doing a lot of full arch cases with a polyether, um, most probably you will, it will be cheaper at the end of the year to use an iOS scanner, seriously. Um, but I guess everything is technique sensitive. So a good impression with an analog dentist, with a polyether that works with a great lab that uses the best gypsum and runs a good dye and does everything analog, that's amazing. And I really have to stress that. A high, but you know, it's like an artisan. How many people know how to make great shoes? There's only a few guys in the world that know how to craft you know, from a cow into a pair of shoes. There's very few people. And they don't put out a lot of pairs of shoes a year. They put out maybe, what, 100 pairs of shoes a year, you know? And just think about that in dentistry. So it all depends. So I definitely do not want to be associated to the claim that you cannot do great dentistry without digital at all. I just think that not everybody's a master. And what digital technology does is it helps you see straight away your mistakes. So whereas if you're taking an analog impression, you look into it and you can see a few air bubbles and you have to go back in and take it again. With an iOS scanner, while you're scanning, you can see the problems. And that is a lot more user-friendly. It doesn't necessarily mean it's faster. I can guarantee you that sometimes with an iOS, I take longer than with a, a, a silicon. I can guarantee you, all right? Depends on the patient's mouth. Let's just say all things equal, there's no saliva, there's no blood and the, the retraction cord is in and the preps are great. Sometimes, you know, so if everything goes well with the silicon, it's actually faster. But with an iOS scanner, technique sensitive, position of the mouth. But the cool thing is, is that you can actually correct it while you're scanning. And I think that's the biggest uh, uh, game changer here. Yeah, depending, uh, not, well, the interoral scanners are working with the same technologies, but there are other factors, including, as my, Miguel said, um, the technique of the preparation, the technique of the, of, of, the, of the dryness of the field that you scan, the light position, the light influence. So there are all factors that plays a role. And uh, it, 
Also, if it is a single tooth, a small span, or a full arch, and that, it's another factor. So all these factors were a subject in the consensus conference in order to determine the highest accuracy by the same conditions, by technique of scanning, height of the scan body, form and design of the scan body, jumping distance between other scan bodies. So all this are playing a role, ex uh, ex uh, except also the technical, only the software or the technical uh, properties of this device. So it's more complex than you think, including your preparation technique. So um, follow up on all these parameters and use by the conclusions, by those parameters, choose the right technology of intra -or scan. Okay, perfect. Um, well, I know that you two likely have to get back to work again. Thank you for um, getting me up early this morning and I appreciate your time and um, sharing your passion with us. Really appreciate your time. Our pleasure. I wish you all good health. Uh, and I think that we should use this time um, for beneficial and efficient synergy between partners, um, clinicians, and patients in, and, uh, with the consideration and the mutual respect. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Best regards to everybody. Thank you. This is Miguel. <laughs> Bye, darling. So, Bye, darling. So, although we didn't touch much on the T-scan technology uh, for the folks that are watching and, and that watch this after um, it's been recorded, I just want to remind everybody that there are these four workshops that are available to the audience for free and they can be accessed with your enrollment into this series. So if any questions come up from either the interview today or the interviews in the future or those workshops and you'd like to speak with us directly or you want more information on the Digital Dentistry Society, please reach out to us at TechScan. Um, you can reach us at 617-464-4500, or you can reach us at info at techscan.com or go to our website. Um, have a great day or night, depending on where some of you are from. Everyone's here from around the world. And um, please join us as we continue with this very important Tech Talk series. Thanks again, guys. Congratulations for this initiative. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you.